Imagine if all of your fears disappeared. Real quick, I want you to think of all your fears and compile them into a mental bag in your brain. Throw in there every single fear you have. Your deepest and darkest ones that keep you up at night, the small ones that are always keeping you anxious, and the ones that you probably share with most other people, such as the fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of death, and so on. Now throw them all into this imaginary bag and close the bag up and tie it up real good. Make sure it's tight so nothing comes out. Now imagine I came along and offered you a trade. I'll trade you your bag filled with all of your fears in exchange for a small bag that has only one fear. And I promise you and guarantee you 100% that if you take this trade and you take this new fear on, all the other fears are gonna disappear. Would you take this trade? A lot of you might already know what this fear is, but some of you don't. So to illustrate it, I'm gonna use a story from the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. There was once a man by the name of Abu Jahl. This man lived at the time of the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in the same city as him. And he absolutely hated everything the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was doing. He hated that he was worshiping one God. He hated that he was calling people to worship one God. And he hated all the kindness and peace that he was spreading. So this man, Abu Jahl, went out on a mission to try to destroy the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and his followers. He did many awful things, such as insult the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. He persecuted the believers, and he even went as far to kill some of the believers. He once took a believing woman by the name of Sumeya, radiallahu anha, and he tied her up and let her sit out in the sun, in the desert. And he did this and kept telling her to renounce Islam, leave Islam, stop being a Muslim. But then eventually Abu Jahl got frustrated that this lady did not want to leave Islam, so then he took a spear and stabbed her, and she died. This was how evil Abu Jahl was. And now one day a man from a neighboring tribe came to the city of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, to do some business. The man ran into Abu Jahl and they agreed on a business deal. Abu Jahl took the inventory from the man and Abu Jahl promised him that he's gonna pay him later. The man came later seeking the money that he's owed from Abu Jahl and Abu Jahl acted like he didn't even know who this guy was. So this man went around the city asking people for help. And remember, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, is in the city. Eventually the man reached a group of disbelievers and asked them for help. And they thought it would be funny to direct this guy who's seeking help against Abu Jahl to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. So the man walked up to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, explained to him what happened, explained to him that this man, Abu Jahl, has stole from him and asked for help. And the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, without any hesitation said, let's go. He took the man, they went straight to Abu Jahl's house and knocked on the door and said, you have to pay this man. And Abu Jahl paid the man. Look at the fearlessness and the courage of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Abu Jahl was a man who was persecuting and killing the believers for years upon years. And now the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, went straight to his door when another man asked him for help. And now the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, had only one fear. And most of you can already guess what this fear is. It's the fear of Allah. Your only fear should be the fear of Allah. Multiple times in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to fear him. In chapter 3, verse 102, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who have believed, fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die except as Muslims. Chapter 3, verse 175, that warning was only from Satan trying to prompt you to fear his followers. So do not fear them, fear me if you are true believers. Chapter 17, verse 31, do not kill your children for fear of poverty. We provide for them and for you. Surely killing them is a heinous sin. And remember, the Quran is full of profound wisdom. You're not supposed to overlook anything within the Quran. It's all revelation. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you to fear him and only him, there's deep wisdom behind this. Now sit there and truly analyze and self-reflect for yourself. Do you fear Allah? Are you conscious of Allah constantly? Or do you let the world fear you? Do you let Satan fear you? I can tell you right now, if you fear other people, you're lacking the fear of Allah in your life. Because you must understand, if God wanted to harm you, is there anyone that could stop him? And if God wanted to bless you, if he wanted to give you goodness, is there anyone that can stop him? Absolutely not. There is nothing and nobody that can stop God Almighty. And also understand, if everyone in the world wanted to harm you, but God doesn't want you to get harmed, then you will never be touched. But if everyone in the world wanted to help you, but God didn't want to help you, then you will never be helped. And in authentic hadith, Ibn Abbas reported, I was riding behind the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, when he said to me, O oh young man, I will teach you some words. Be mindful of Allah and he will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him before you. If you ask, ask from Allah. If you seek help, seek help from Allah. Know that if the nations gather together to benefit you, they cannot benefit you unless Allah decreed it for you. And if the nations gather together to harm you, they cannot harm you unless Allah has decreed it for you. 
the pens have been lifted and the pages have dried. So this fear you have of other people or this fear you have of rejection or this fear you have of failure, it comes because you're lacking the fear of God. You're lacking the fear of Allah. Now, I know many, many people who have the potential to do amazing, great things in their life, but they have this crippling fear of what other people think of them that's holding them back. Oh, what are my friends from high school gonna think about that? Oh, what if I fail? Oh, what if it doesn't work? All of these are false fears. You shouldn't be fearing any of these things. You should only be fearing Allah. Some people message me and ask me how to get started on YouTube and what to do and what to talk about. But you already know the answer. You know, you just have to turn on the camera and start talking. That's it. These people fear failing. These people fear what other people are going to think about them. These people fear if it doesn't work out. You already know what you have to do, but you just have these crippling fears that are holding you back. And just ingrain this in your head. Once you fear Allah and Allah only, all your other fears disappear. Do you fear death? The fear of Allah will save you. Do you fear poverty? Your provisions are already written for. Do you fear loneliness? Allah is always with you. Every single fear you have can be combated with the fear of Allah. Think about not approaching a woman who could be the perfect wife for you and the mother to your children and not approaching her because you have a fear of rejection. You're gonna let an amazing blessing, half your deen, go right by you just because you have a fear of rejection. So look, moral of the story, you need to become fearless and only fear Allah. If you wanna start a YouTube channel, Go start it. If you want to start a halal business, go start it. If you want to ask that girl for marriage, go ask her. You need to start taking risks and not fearing failure, only fearing Allah. And now I want to leave you with one last hadith. When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and Abu Bakr were fleeing from Mecca to Medina and they hid in the cave, the people who were chasing them came right up to them in the cave. And Abu Bakr and the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, were under the cave and they could see the feet of the people persecuting them. Abu Bakr said to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, if one of them were to look down, they would see us under their feet. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, O oh, Abu Bakr, what do you think of two people with whom Allah is the third? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. Or we talk about self-improvement and Islam on this channel. And if you're looking for a community for Muslims online to talk and network and hang out, I have a free school community, first link in the description below, completely free for any Muslim to join. You can come in there, talk and network with fellow Muslims, inshallah. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy this one as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.